Hi, this is Video Boost. I'm not sure which one it is, but it's November the 8th, 2010. Yep. And um, what we've been discussing in class is we've been discussing the fact that you can evaluate an acid on the merits of the conjugate base. And this is because we're using K Ka and pKa <coughs> to describe acidity. And pKa and Ka are thermodynamic functions. And that means they rely on both the products and the reactants. So, of course, Ka, you should really think about this if you're not thinking about it. This is really what you should have gotten out of general chemistry. Ka equals, right, B minus, the concentration of B minus times the concentration of H plus over the concentration of HB. Now, you would have described this in terms of water chemistry, okay? But I'm just saying that when you're talking about Ka, B minus matters. B minus is the conjugate base. Anything that raises the concentration of B minus increases the value of Ka. Um, and it's true, anything that reduces the concentration of HB also increases Ka. But realize, this ratio has a lot to do with B minus, and we tend to ignore it. But why is B minus so important to us, the conjugate base? Because it has charge. And when you have charge, it's a lot easier to describe stability. So anything that distributes that charge is going to stabilize B minus. If B minus is more stable, it's a weaker base. If it's a weaker base, its concentration is going to go up. In other words, it's going to have a, a longer lifetime. If its concentration goes up, Ka goes up, right? If Ka goes up, pKa goes down because pKa equals minus the log of K, Ka. But I want you to think about that. B minus, or the conjugate base, really matters. And you're going to see the things that we're talking about are much uh, greater effects on a charged system than an uncharged system, particularly when you're talking about resonance stabilization. Okay, so what I wanted to do was talk about something that's going to come up for you, and it's kind of a complicated issue. And that is... If you were looking at a structure like this, okay, and you were comparing, let's say, this hydrogen here with this hydrogen, okay, and you were trying to establish which hydrogen was more acidic or which hydrogen might react more readily with a base. So in other words, if I put a really strong base in, you know, something like, like it could almost be like super base. So supposing I had Li, okay, this is lithium, um, this is n-butyl lithium. Um, some people call it n-brutal lithium. That's not the real name. It's really n-butyl lithium. And the reason is because it is such a strong base. Why is it such a strong base? Because if you break this up, what it behaves like is this. Full negative charge on carbon. So I will tell you again, I guarantee, anytime you have a full negative charge on carbon, hydrogen, nitrogen, or oxygen, you have a very strong base. Why is this a full negative charge on carbon? Because there's no resonance, okay? Now, these two types of hydrogen are kind of interesting to people because this kind of hydrogen is what you would call allylic, that's a new term, a special term, an important term. You could also call it benzylic, but for now we'll just call it, call it allylic. And this kind of hydrogen you would probably call vinylic in a general sense, okay? There are other specific terms because it's on benzene. These are very different types of hydrogens, okay? A vinylic hydrogen is not very acidic. Its pKa is around 40 or so. This hydrogen would be considerably lower. It would probably be 30 or lower, okay, this hydrogen right here, because it's allylic. Which of these two would be more reactive with this really strong base? This one would be more reactive because it's allylic. So what's so special about being allylic versus vinylic? Well, if you take this hydrogen off, so again, we analyze the acid in terms of the base. So we want to look at the base. So what happens if this base does come in and rip this hydrogen off, okay? What happens? If it does, what we will get 
is this. We will get this anion. Okay, what kind of anion is that? That is an allylic anion. Okay? It has resonance stabilization. So you could write three more resonance forms. There's no O there. Three, three more resonance forms that would look like this. And you should be practicing this. And hopefully from your PLI you've gotten better at this by now. It's not an O. I'm just dying to draw a carbonyl here. Um, and then, so what does this say? What is the story that this is telling? The story that this is telling is that when you pull that hydrogen off, the electron density is distributed through this entire kind of like pi railroad track. And what's happening, right, is the electron density is moving through the pi system on top and below the molecule, and you have, a, you have some negative charge in these locations, okay? So what would we say about this? We would say this is a resonance stabilized anion. You would say there's a fraction of negative charge at each location, and you would say in a relative sense, this is a fairly weak base because the charge is distributed, okay? On the other hand, if you take, so if you take the, um, hydrogen off. And again, it's good to experiment. Rip the hydrogen off. There's nothing wrong with that. If you take the hydrogen off the vinylic position, you get a vinylic anion. And vinylic anions do not have resonance stabilization. Now why is that? The reason is that the vinylic hydrogen, which was in this position, and it's in various other positions, the vinylic hydrogen is sitting perpendicular to the pi system, okay? So if I were going to draw this, I'm going to keep that allylic, um, this is our allylic anion. If we rip that, if we looked at this, right, this benzene system, the p orbitals would be perpendicular to the plane of the ring, okay? The, the vinylic hydrogen we're talking about is sitting out off on the side. So if you ripped this hydrogen off and created an anion, the anion is perpendicular to the pi system. And again, the pi system is the railroad track that distributes the charge. So if this is sitting out in something sort of like an sp2 orbital, and it's sitting out perpendicular, that charge will not be distributed through that pi system. Whereas here, this will rehybridize itself to be sp2 so that it does have a p orbital. The, the electrons will be in that p orbital and that will overlap with the whole system and become part of that railroad track. But here, because it's already filled and the bond is sitting out perpendicular, when you generate the charge, the charge is not gonna be part of that system. So this base, this vinylic base, is much stronger than the allylic base, okay? So I'll see you in class tomorrow.